I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today we are going to continue our Bible study on Ephesians and we are going to see the fifth chapter either fully or the first part. We will try to finish um, the whole chapter. If it takes long, we will uh, we'll take the family part in the next, uh, next, uh, um, next month. Okay, today we are going to do all these things. First, I would like to share my story, my testimony. Uh, up to, uh, I went as a missionary. And then, we all will part. We all will take part in one important thing. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, we read an important thing. And we all know very well about the thing in 25, that is not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, not giving up meeting together. That's why we gather as church. But it's interesting to see the things which is before and after this passage, uh, this uh, phrase. Let me read uh, verse 24. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. Sorry, 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Spur one another. Then in verse 25, but encourage one another, but encouraging one another. So let us try to have this one another aspect also in our service today. I was born in a Christian family, a pious family, in a small coffee estate in Nilgris. And my parents were teachers there. So we were one among, uh, we were very special in that estate because my parents were one of the few educated people in that estate. And we were the only Christians. And my parents tried their best to bring, up, bring us up in godly way. So every Sunday we had to memorize some psalm, uh, psalms. And if we go to some meeting or Sunday service, we have to tell what we, le what we learned there after coming home. And if you look here and there in the church, my parents used to scold us. And to go to church, we had to walk one hour in a hilly place. And uh, we met, uh, and as I grew up, because of my ma mother's faith and her discipline, spiritual disciplines, my father started attending a family prayer. Earlier, only we, uh, three children and my mother used to attend. Uh, we used to pray, uh, sit in our house early morning in that cold uh, climate. We used to sing a song, then um, read a Bible passage, and all the three of us used to pray, and then my mother used to pray. And then, uh, those days, my father was just lying down on the cot and watching this. Then slowly, he started coming this way. And my parents gave importance for the Bible and also for missionaries. They were praying for missionaries, and they were um, uh, telling us a lot of missionary biographies. And one day, when a, a group of people from uh, uh, a, a missionary organization, FMBB, came to us, and my father had some of his classmates. My father had some of his classmates from uh, South uh, Tamil Nadu coming to our church, so he started uh, becoming attached with them. And then, he uh, started involving in missions. Okay, so I had a very good background, but I was a sinner. When I was a small boy, I was doing some sins. When I became a teenager, some other type of sins came into my life. I don't want to list out what are the sins I did, but I was a sinner. Some sins became habitual for me. And in this situation, I attended a, a student's meeting uh, when I was a 10 standard boy. That time I went to South Tamil Nadu and uh, I was taken to a camp, student's camp in the Kutalam Hills. And it was a very uh, beautiful evening, a Sandhya message in the beautiful breeze, a thunderous voice was preaching. And the preacher preached on Proverbs 29.1. A man who remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without any remedy. 
and this came to me again and again. This verse he mentioned again and again. He told some stories about death and hell. And as a teenager sitting there, uh, I got afraid. So out of fear, first I gave my life to Christ. Maybe because I got, uh, I accepted Christ on the basis of emotions, I couldn't stand longer. Slowly I was going away. But I had the thirst in my heart. So in my, when I finished my 12th standard, I prayed. I was uh, reading the Bible. My mother used to write letters. I was staying in an hostel. My mother used to write a letter. And every letter, uh, one uh, sentence was there always. Read the Bible, pray, and then study. So I used to read the Bible just for the sake of reading. I was reading Proverbs so that I can get some worldly wisdom. So I was reading uh, Proverbs 29 because it was the 29th of that month. And again, I read the verse. So I felt very sad about my backslidden life. So I said, if I go to a college, I should live a good life. So I went to St. John's College, Palayam Gotem. There, in the very first day, I could meet one professor. He uh, invited me to uh, the prayer cell there. And then he took us uh, to a picnic spot for a first year's meeting. So some of us, first year students, went there. We were sitting on a rock. And there, he asked us to read Ephesians chapter 2, 1 to 8, with the heading, Old Life and New Life. There, sitting alone and studying the, uh, by, uh, studying the passage, I got the assurance of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 became very close to my heart. By faith, through uh, grace, I am saved. From that day onwards, my ambitions, my aim, everything changed. I started growing in the Lord through personal Bible studies. My quiet time helped me a lot to grow in the Lord. As I started thinking about my future and praying, God slowly revealed himself to me and his plan for my future. As um, I was sitting in a missionary send-off meeting in that professor's house. Two of our college seniors were going as missionaries to Gujarat. Uh, one already went and came back and another one was going uh, for the first time. And they shared how God called them. And a preacher preached from Bible with a lot of statistics about the needs in India. And God started speaking to me. I realized that God created me in this needy country with a purpose. Without purpose, God won't create anyone. And I felt that there is a purpose in creating me in this world. And And as a result, I, for the first time, I realized God's call in my life in that meeting. I didn't want to take any emotional decision. That day before going to bed, I prayed like this. Lord, if you are calling me, I am ready to go anywhere. But I am uh, ready to go anywhere. I, will, I am ready to sacrifice anything because your sacrifice on the cross is the greatest in my life. I prayed that prayer and, and I slept. God's calling is not a one-time experience. So slowly God revealed his calling in my life. And especially through my personal quiet times. Once when I was reading Isaiah chapter 6, God spoke to me through Isaiah's calling. And then I started praying for what type of ministry I should be going. What organization I should join. Uh, uh, when I was praying, like I was involving in students ministry those days. I liked being with youths. Uh, but uh, when I was reading... Uh, Romans 15 one day, God spoke to me very clearly that I should preach the gospel where Christ is not yet named. So through that I understood that God's calling for me is a missionary life where Christ is not yet preached. Then I started praying what type of, uh, what uh, place or what people group I should go. Somehow God gave me the burden for uh, a people group in Andamans. I started praying for them and I started uh, collecting things. Those days, those days we didn't have Google, so I used to go to libraries and get to, uh, encyclopedia and uh, gather information about the people groups in Andaman. And uh, some of our friends who were in Andaman sent us some uh, newspaper cuttings about uh, a group called uh, Jarvas and I was praying all, for all these people. And, but God slowly revealed me that I should be going to this place among this people group. One day, um, as I was very seriously thinking about ministry, I realized that I should step out now. 
in the meantime, I had a lot of problems. I had to go through a surgery and uh, I was wondering whether I could become a missionary with this physical condition. But God gave me the assurance that this God who called me can use me. Then, uh, regarding this particular people group, I understood that I cannot go as a missionary to them directly. So I thought of going as a tent maker. So I bought a tailoring shop and I learned tailoring so that I can become a tailor there or I can do some business there. Then I also started teaching in a school. One year I taught in a school so that I can become a tuition teacher there. Then just before going, I wanted to be a, uh, I wanted to have some missionary training. So I joined Outreach Training Institute. Uh, that was one of the best training centers those days. And there, some of the leaders of IEM invited me to join IEM and they said that you can go under any brand. You don't have to call yourself as a missionary. You can go there as a teacher or a businessman and we will support you. So I prayed and as God led me, I joined. And um, we will tell the remaining stories some other day. The purpose of my today's sharing is to share my story in six minutes. I don't know, I took six minutes or not, but that is one of the uh, best way to tell stories. You can take nine minutes, that will be good. Three points in three minutes, three, three, three. Uh, or even one, 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 three minutes you can share. Uh, my whole life, how I got changed and what is my new life? In the new life, I, Bible studies, uh, my personal Bible study helps me, my personal life, my fellowship helps me, as my fellowship in the college was a great help for me when I uh, started growing in the Lord. So like that, we can share about uh, the life after our salvation. My whole life, the day I got saved or the experience, then how I got saved later. In Acts chapter 26, we read this, Paul shared his testimony, he shared all the three components in uh, three minutes. So it's very easy to share our testimony in three minutes. And we can even share in 15 seconds. So we are going to do that now. What we are going to do is, we are going to think about our feelings of our past life and the day we got saved or the experience of salvation in our lives and the feeling after we are saved. If I have to say, I may say something like this. Before I, accepting Christ, my, I was feeling empty. I was feeling unsatisfied. Just one feeling, I was feeling unsatisfied. The day I got salvation, my, God, my heart rejoiced, rejoiced. And after that, I have a satisfied life, satisfied feeling in my heart. Three feelings. Empty, happy, happiness, then um, satisfied, okay? So can you think about your life in three feelings? Three feelings. Before accepting Christ, how you are feeling? The day you got salvation, or maybe the experience, for some of us it may not be one particular day, but we have that experience. The experience of salvation, how do you feel? Then, after that, when you are growing in the Lord, how do you feel now? Think about three sentences, uh, three feelings. After a few seconds, you are going to share this to someone who is sitting next to you, either in the front or back or left side or right side, or even through phone to some of our friends who are um, attending through Zoom, so that they also will feel that they are part of the church. Uh, take a few seconds, about three feelings, and then please share it with others. This is the one another part. We are going to encourage one another by telling our life. Okay, now you can share.
Okay, thank you. It's a good exercise and we can use this pattern very often, either telling our feelings or the whole story. Just one minute, whole life, one minute, how we got saved and another minute, how we are now. This will help a person a lot. And also, just before sharing our testimony to someone, we can make this as a bridge. Just telling our story, then we can go to God's story. Okay. In the first three chapters, we studied about who we are in Christ. And then in fourth and fifth chapters, we studied about how to walk worthy, walk carefully, and walk wisely. And these passages also instruct us how not to walk, how not to walk worthless life. And in um, up to fifth chapter, that is fourth chapter, and the first part of fifth chapter is general instructions. Fifth chapters, the later part of fifth chapter and the early part of sixth chapter are uh, where the context is home, at home, how we uh, walk wisely at home. And sixth chapter, the later part of sixth chapter talks about uh, spiritual warfare. So today we are going to study about, um, uh, last week we studied how we walk wisely or how we walk carefully uh, with the help of Bible meditations. Bible meditations forms a biblical worldview in our thought world, in our mind. In our mind, all the three components involve the will. We decide. When we study the Bible, the Bible helps us to decide according to the biblical thinking. And the Bible um, changes our thinking so that our feelings also change. So our feelings, thinking and will is controlled by biblical thoughts when we study the Bible. And it's not just for one time or like... Uh, uh, coming to church or listening to some Bible studies. It's daily experience. We study the Bible personally and daily. That helps. This is what we studied in chapter 4. Um, we read Ephesians chapter 4, 22. You have heard about him and were taught in him. Those days, they didn't have New Testament in their hands. So the apostolic teaching was the New Testament for them. So they heard it and they, they were taught. So as we read and as we uh, study, the Bible changes our behavior. So it changes our walks, our thinking our, and everything. Our feelings, our thinking, our behavior. And today we are going to study chapter 5, the first passage. And here we have some do's and don'ts. We are not going to study deeper, but let us just glance through it. First it says, be imitators of God. As loving children, be imitators of, of God. The children are natural followers. The ch uh, children usually follow the parents, how they walk, how they do things, how they talk. So like a child, follow your father. Imitators, be imitators of God. That is one way to walk wisely. And then walk in love. The relationship between me and my God is love. So my uh, attitude and my behavior towards others is also based on love. And then we should have a heart of thanksgiving, a grateful heart. Then do things or discern what is pleasing to the Lord. These are the instructions Paul gives in this passage about walking rightly. And so there are some don'ts. First, sexual immorality. This includes all imaginations, perversions, ideas, actions. All sexual immorality. And then impurity. It includes, it's, it's gender, it's about everything. All types of impurity. We should not have as children of Christ. This is written to believers, not to unbelievers. This is written to a quality church. A church which is very much on the teachings of Paul, very much teachings uh, on the Bible. Uh, they are following the word of God. But to them, to the saints, Paul is writing, we should not have all these things in our lives. We should not have sexual immorality. 
in any way and impurity of any type and covetousness, filthiness, foolish talk, crude joking. And if you read in different versions, you will have a lot of other words that will help us to understand that we should not have any type of wrong things which we see in others. We are a holy nation. We, the church, are worshippers of holy God. Our God is different from all other so-called gods. And one of the main things about our God is he is a holy God. And he ex expects holiness in our lives. And we should not take part in the unfruitful works of darkness. And in this passage, it tells about our life. It says, you were, you were darkness and you are light. It's not you were in darkness. It's you were darkness and now you are light. Not only we are in the light, we are light. We are light to the world. So the expectation of our father is very high. We cannot live like others and tell that, no, uh, in, the, uh, in the church I am very holy. Outside uh, I am like any other. Otherwise they won't respect me. Otherwise they, I cannot be friend with them. We cannot talk like that. We belong to a different kingdom. And we, our mark is holiness. By our holiness, by our walk, people should understand that our God is holy. That's why we pray that uh, in the Lord's Prayer, uh, we pray that God's name, uh, his name will be declared holy in this world through my life. That is the meaning of uh, Lord's Prayer. Hallowed be thy name. My, your name will be declared holy through my life in this world. So these are the do's and don'ts. And these are the things we have to sit, think, and we may have to go through every line and that will help us. In my life, when I go through some difficult times, uh, this is what I do. I start reading Psalms 51, Psalms 32, and that helps me um, rectify my things. Many times when we uh, think about holiness, we compare with others. We, come, we think about holiness in the context of our world. Maybe in the context of believers, but the touchstone is the Bible. So let us go back to God in his presence, studying from the word, checking where we are lacking. That will help us. That has helped me a lot many times. Many times when we go to the Bible, we think that I never thought that this is wrong. It's not uh, about new believers. Even for mature believers like us, we have this. I have missed certain things because I didn't go to the Bible. I have missed certain things because I didn't go to God's presence. So this, when we go through this list, God will help us if we have any of these things and will help us to come out of it. So the first thing is Bible. Bible helps us to walk rightly. Then the second thing is the Holy Spirit. That's what we read in uh, this passage, Ephesians 5, 18. Uh, the, um, you might have received in, through WhatsApp group the same uh, PowerPoint in that the uh, passage is wrong, the reference is wrong. It's Ephesians 5, 18. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us in our walk with the Lord. To live a holy life, we need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We all know that. Theoretically, we all know that. Practically, it is difficult because it, it should be intentional. We should give place to the Holy Spirit. Um, he is a gentle spirit. He will not force us. When we yield our feelings, when we yield our thinking to Christ, the Holy Spirit, He helps us walk a um, happy life, walk a um, right life. So let us think about our involvement with the Holy Spirit. Are we under the control of the Holy Spirit or not? And also one more um, difficult thing in understanding the filling of the Holy Spirit is we have so much uh, wrong teachings on this topic. Whenever we think about Holy Spirit or whenever we hear about Holy Spirit, people talk about the power. And the power also mostly physical power. The volume of the singing or of the prayer is attached with the power. That again is wrong. The power of the Holy Spirit is different. Whenever we study in uh, the Bible, especially in Acts of the Apostles, 
they proclaimed the gospel they were witnesses by the power of the holy spirit so the primary purpose of the holy spirit is to help us uh, have a holy life and again the word filled also is misquoted again so immediately as soon as we hear about filling of the holy spirit we think uh, a cup being filled filled to the brim of course that is also right it's not a wrong meaning uh, but to understand better we have some things like this let us think in this way one is hand filling a glove a glove without a hand is shapeless or and useless that glove cannot do anything but when we fill the glove with our hand the hand uh, directs the hand helps the glove move here and there so this is like holy spirit coming into our life and using us we are just a glove without the hand of the holy spirit we cannot do anything so this is one way of understanding how the holy spirit works in our lives another thing is wind filling the sails of the ship when the wind fills the sails of the ship it directs the ship it gives a direction so when the holy spirit fills us he takes us to the right path another way of understanding this uh, the filling of the holy spirit is salt permeating meat salt permeating meat the salt goes into the meat and it gives a new flavor and it preserves it so like that when the holy spirit permeates into our thought life into our uh, thinking into our whole being the holy spirit guides us this is one have one way of understanding the filling of the holy spirit and of course we know the this word this word control wherever we read the uh, phrase being filled with the holy spirit we can use the word being controlled by the holy spirit the holy spirit controlling us but it's not a one time experience just coming and going that was old testament in the old testament the holy spirit came for a purpose to certain people and did the work and went back but after acts chapter 2 the holy spirit came and he indwells in the lives of a uh, believer either we can grieve him or make him happy he is in us he stays in us in the sunday school when we think about uh, accepting christ or uh, giving to the lordship of christ we always say jesus or we many times we call jesus the father or like uh, yesapa no yesu baba so we call jesus coming into our heart maybe for a small child understanding uh, for child's understanding that is better but what really happens when we call our god to come in into our hearts the holy spirit comes and he lives he indwells in our heart and he when we give him the um, keys when we give him the steering wheel he takes full control over us and when we are controlled by the holy spirit we live a holy life this is the way we live holy life it's not like do this or don't do this that we cannot uh, tell to our own mind or heart that's what but that's what we try i should not do this from today onwards i do, i should not do that uh, that we have a big list and almost every birth birthdays we renew the list or during every january first we renew that list but by our effort we cannot live a holy life when we study the bible the bible changes our thinking when we go to the holy spirit when we yield our um, heart to the spirit he guides us so what we need is a surrender life to the spirit when we surrender he takes us to the right place and it is wonderful it is wonderful only those who really experience the life being controlled by the holy spirit can experience this christian life is not some do's and don'ts it is living 100% surrendered life and that helps us live a 100% satisfied life we may not have everything we may not enjoy all that people promise all that people other people enjoy but we can have a satisfied life and we can have a hope because we know for sure that 
my lord the holy spirit who uh, dwells in me knows everything and he guides me at the right way at the right time then paul talks about some uh, things that he says be wise be wise he says make the best use of the time to be a wise person to walk wisely we have to use the time properly why we should be careful in using the time actually the the uh, the meaning the word is redeem the time literally it is buying the time all of us are given 24 hours nobody is given 23 hours or 25 hours all of us are given equal time but by our priorities we buy or waste our time and we should be very careful as god's children because the days are evil the days are evil satan is very active and people are going to hell very fast recently we were uh, last week we were attending a eu missions camp so we prepared some powerpoints with lot of statistics the very sad thing is india is in the last position in everything evangelism among uh, culturally close people we are the least evangelism to the uh, culturally distance group again we are last china is better and uh, many other uh, muslim uh, significant countries there the percentage is better percentage wise i am not talking about the numbers so many years we are sending missionaries we are taking lot of things but india is in a very pathetic condition and sometimes we think that missionaries should go to north india missionaries should go to that particular people groups but we are in the mission field nobody can show us a place where 90% christians in our place in our workplace in our staying place nobody can see even 50% we are filled with unbelievers either from christian background or muslim background or hindu background we are filled with people without christ the days are evil so let us use our time to share the gospel let us use our time to pray for them let us use our time to live a life which will touch them then let us be wise by understanding what the will of the lord what the will of the lord again this is a daily process every moment we should know whether we are in the will of the lord this is the area we often uh, struggle we believers we struggle because um, only for ma- uh, major things we go to the lord and pray and try to find out god's will some of us even we may miss even in the major things because of the peer pressure because of the pressure from somebody whom we love we may miss out god's will but god wants us to walk in his will in everything in even in small matters again that's a very happy thing when we live under the control of the spirit he reveals his will and when we walk in his will that's a very joyous life you know there are a lot of surprises in walking in his will and it is not easy to find god's will for those who walk close to him it is not difficult to find god's will for those who walk closer to him and then the third thing is make melody to the lord with your heart make melody to the lord with your heart paul gave a lot of place for this this particular things hymns songs many types of song uh, music is written here music is an important role uh, important thing in worshiping the lord here paul uses this music for even uh, helping others to help one another we sing song i praise god for the music uh, team worship team today they have chosen very good songs and the introductions were very meaningful and that helped us to think about the sins which can come in our lives and rectify our lives this is the meaning of the passage we we hear and the worship leader was very specific in telling that let us think whether we have this and let us come back to the lord that is the work of music in evangelistic way 
and the music can be used in encouraging a believer in our personal spiritual disciplines. So let us select songs, sing songs wisely so that this can play a role in everybody's life. In 1960s, there was a missionary revival in, uh, in South Tamil Nadu. And one of the, one of the reasons was as, uh, some of the songs written by Mr. Emil Jabasi. By hearing those songs, people went to North India. I still remember one song. Vada desam sellum veeran yaar namile, pala desam sellum badi kuri nare. The very first line starts like this. Hearing that, somebody went to North India. Hearing that song, he understood that. God asked us to go to many nations. I should go to North India. He went. Songs can play that role. You know what happened in the recent past? Those days we had, uh, the proportion was good. Mission songs, songs about sins. Almost all the beautiful songwriters, when they came to the Lord, they wrote beautiful songs about uh, their salvation. Like, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. In any language, if you search, you will have some songs. People wrote songs based on their personal salvation experience. And songs were written about missions, about pushing people to go. And there were songs about uh, discipleship. Discipleship. By singing one song, we can understand some of the qualities of a disciple. But those days, in some areas or maybe in some languages, we had little less worship songs. That was true 20, 30 years back. I still remember an article uh, written by Warren VSB. And the heading was, Worship, the Missing Jewel of Evangelical Church. Uh, I read this around uh, 25 years back. But later, worship songs started coming. And now, what has happened, that has replaced all other things, most of the other area. You know, Satan always gives us some good and takes away the best. So the proportion is not proper now. So there are very few mission songs. So let us think about music, songs, hymns, in any language where we involve. And let us give importance for that. Let songs speak to people. And then it talks about submitting to one another. Submitting to one another. That's very important. Um, Usually, when people study this particular chapter, they study after this. There it is written, submit to your husbands. But we miss this place, submitting to one another. This is a quality of a believer. When we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit, He gives us a humble God, heart. And with that humble heart, we can submit to others. That is not easy actually, you know submitting to one another because we are all human beings our neighbor is a human so if we submit he wants to crush us now you you try in your workplace to some of the so-called subordinates or the customers or the patients you become very humble and uh, talk very humble they will take advantage it ha happens in most situations so what we do in the beginning itself we want to affirm that we are somebody superior. Submitting in the heart and outside is a quality of a believer. Now many people uh, accept people because they are humble. You know, people, uh, even though people don't talk with us much, but they, uh, they assess us. He is humble. He is stubborn. Like that. So if you are humble, our doors are open. No, for some people, our voice may be a problem. Our voice may show that we are not humble. But for every one of us, our words, the way we express, is in our hands. We have to learn words, we have to learn uh, ideas, how we can be humble, what makes us haughty, what makes us uh, arrogant. And we can learn to be humble. And the first step is to yield our everything to Christ. We are servants. We are slaves. That is our identity in Christ. If we know that we are God's slaves, then we will be humble. Submitting is one important thing and we have to submit to one another. 
Um, though we have crossed the time, I would like to finish just with this so that we can finish this chapter. There are two things about wives. One is submit to your own husbands. Another thing is respect your husband. And the context is not, ma not male dominant culture. That is how we misread this passage. Wives should submit. Already, most of our culture is male dominant, male chauvinistic culture. And we go there, hi, I'm the biggest, I'm the strongest, submit to me. This is not the context Bible is talking about submission. And the context is the verse which we, which we read earlier, that is, in a Christ-centered home, in a Christ-centered uh, culture, we submit to each other. And when it comes for some decision-making, wives submit to your husbands. And she submits happily because she knows that her husband, as a believer, submits to her. It's not power culture, it is Christ culture. And then to husbands, love your wives. This responsibility is really big. If you study the passage, you will be afraid. Because the comparison is, is with the love of Christ. Christ loved the church. So husbands, love your wives the way Christ loved. And it is a sacrificial love. He gave himself up for her, for the church. Christ died on the cross and he loved the church. So you, husbands, love your wife like that. And love your wife as your own flesh. Nobody hates his flesh. And then again, there is one more command to the husband, that is, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife. He talks about the unity. He talks about the mystery. And uh, you are one body. Husband and wife is one body. So, leave your father and mother. Again, the context is sixth commandment. What is the sixth commandment? Honor your parents. So it's not dishonoring parents and throwing them away and being together with the wife. Let us be careful uh, because the culture which is uh, coming much from the western side is highly individualistic and we don't bother about our parents or about uh, anyone in the world. We ourselves, I and at the maximum my family, my immediate family, my wife and my children. God wants us to honor our parents till their death. And that God says, you honor, you honor your parents, but the pattern for your family is you are one. And emotionally and physically, leave your parents and love your wife. May God bless us to walk wisely by yielding our lives to the word and to the spirit. May God bless us all. Thank you. Shall we, shall we bow down and pray? Our Father, we thank you for speaking to us through your word. Lord, we, Lord, we have lived our lives many times by as we wish. Father, now we, we yield our lives to you, to the Spirit, to your word. Father, we pray that you be our master. You guide us, Father. Help us to surrender every day so that we can live a satisfied life in this world a life which is pleasing to you and you alone. Help us to practice this in our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.